So this morning I'm travelling with Utran Travel from our homestay at my villa, Villa Mai Long, and we're uh, travelling down the canal to uh, the Mikan Market. The tides, uh, the tides coming in, so there's plenty of water. We won't get uh, stranded down here, and we'll have a couple of hours at the market, looking around, maybe buy some fresh fruit for a snack, sample some of the uh, local foods, and enjoy the Mekong hospitality. along the canal here you can see the typical Mekong lifestyle. Everyone has a uh, has a little boat landing because that's the most uh, economical and easiest form of, uh, of transport I suppose. There are pathways along all of the canals and as we found yesterday they are quite a labyrinth so you can cross here and cross there and go down a pathway and through a beautiful garden and forget where you're going <laughs> and then have to phone a friend to find out how do I get home but it's all part of the, the experience here of a tourist's visit to the Mekong. about living on the river is you've always got a chance for a swim. Even if there is a bit of trash floating past you at various times. But hey, it's the Mekong. Even the chickens use the uh, the walkway to get to the boat.
and Yu's being a good girl and putting on her sunscreen. <laughs> yeah. Protect herself from the sun. Yeah. And keep her looking deep. 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 So, to a tourist, seeing all of the wild fruit growing everywhere, the jackfruit, the coconuts, the mangoes. Very beautiful, darling. Yeah, the abundance of uh, of of the fruit trees and uh, and everything as you travel. I mean, obviously, they've been planted many many years ago, but it's just the the sheer abundance that everywhere you look. Um, Certainly as we were riding around yesterday, um, everywhere you look there was there was just more more fruit. Um, a lot of them that uh, I'm not familiar with, the trees, but yep, a bridge over troubled waters. Yeah. Yeah, simple bridge, pedestrian bridge. And the other thing, of course, that we noted yesterday was uh, the smiling faces. I mean, it is a very poor part of of, uh, of Vietnam, I guess simply because there isn't the industry down here that supports the manufacturing and what have you that many of the other centres see it's it's all farming and, and a lot of it is really not much more than subsistence um, I'm sure you know people as we saw at Kai Rung at the floating market who have the bigger the people that have the bigger farms are making enough produce to, to, to make a living but uh, it, it, it'll only ever support so many of, of, the, of the family and uh, many of the of the family eventually have to move away um, up to the bigger centres where they or even in, in over to other countries Thailand Cambodia um, so that they can they, they can earn some earn some money because the work opportunities really aren't, uh, aren't available to them down here. But despite all that, everyone was quite gracious and uh, gave us a wave and of course all the children love to practice their English and say hello and give you a warm greeting. So that, yeah, that really adds um, to the tourist experience down here in the Mekong that uh, despite you know the obvious difficulties that a lot of the people have they uh, they are quite happy to see tourism because I guess they they know that when tourists come it provides opportunities for others to earn a bit of money either through 
moto taxis or uh, or operating a uh, operating their little family boat as um, as our driver is and uh, yeah so the people seem to um, seem to make do and get by with their little lot in life.